What is the biggest struggle in Conan Exiles? Is it surviving the harsh desert? Overcoming the Tower of Bats? Maybe it's enduring the dark corridors of the Black Keep? No, everyone knows the true challenge of Conan Exiles is looking good while you do any of the above. It's always a struggle between looking good and being well protected, but perhaps there's something you can do about that regardless of which armour you're stuck with. That is right, we are looking at the clothing dyeing system. This may seem a bit redundant for some, especially long term players, of course you can dye your armour. Well, this is my unfortunate time to admit that I didn't realise armour was dyeable up until I'd put about 500 hours into the game, and with all the new players coming to Conan after update 3.0, I thought it might be a good idea to make sure you guys don't replicate my mistakes. So firstly, the requirements to accessing this system. Well of course, you'll need access to dyes. This is all done through the Dyer's Bench, which you can unlock at level 25, costing 2 knowledge points. This gives access to the Dyer's Bench and the ability to craft all of the dyes included in the base game. Of course, you'll also need some flasks to hold that die, and thus you'll need access to the Casting Table. This is included in the Blacksmith feat unlocked at level 10, costing 2 knowledge points, and you'll also need a Furnace included in that same feat. So firstly, we're going to need some flasks. The first step is simply just to grab some crystals. My preferred place on the Exiled Lands is the Scuttler's Shortcut, and you can gather them by hand, with a tool, or with the Mask Call spell to gather a massive amount in short order. If you're on Siptar, you can find small clusters of crystals dotted around the Lay Shrines and the Vault entrances. Each flask requires 6 crystals, so do factor that into your farming efforts. Once you've got your crystals, head back home. Throw those crystals into a furnace with some fuel, and let them cook into glass. Two pieces of crystal will make a single piece of glass, and you'll need three pieces of glass for one flask. Once the glass is finished, take it over to the casting table. You'll need a glass flask mould created in the casting table using 15 iron bars. This can be crafted and left in the casting table as it isn't consumed when you make a flask, so it's a pretty cheap tool to create. You can use the mould and the glass to create glass flasks, with each flask requiring 3 pieces of glass, taking 10 seconds to craft each flask. Once those flasks are done, you'll then need to fill them with water to prepare them to hold dye. Simply grab some, head over to your nearest water source and use them on the water to quickly fill them up. Now take your water filled flasks over to the dyer's bench and throw them in. Here you can browse the wealth of recipes for all of the available dyes, and the resources required to craft them. Now this is an absolutely massive list with tons of options, too many to name here, and the only way to really know what you want is to try them out. A good way to know how they'll behave is to try them out in the single player admin mode first. It's also worth noting that the dyes with more detailed titles like Blood Red, Blighted Green, Royal Purple etc are generally much more vibrant and saturated than the regular light and dark versions. For this example, let's say we're making some armour sets for our clan, and we want to go with a colour scheme of black, white and blood red. It's always best to make more dye than you think you'll need, so we'll go and gather the necessary ingredients. Blood red dye requires one bundle of highland berries, so we'll grab some of those. Black dye requires 5 oil, so we'll crush some fish in our fluid press. White dye requires 3 raw ash, so we'll head to the volcano and harvest some from the obsidian nodes. Returning back home, we'll craft 10 of each die. This is likely more than necessary, but having a little extra is good to cover any mistakes, and make sure you don't have to go back out and gather even more if you run short. Now we have our dies, it's time to use them on our armour. Unfortunately, there are some armour types you can't die, namely legendary armours and some special types of armour. However, most armours you'll find or craft can indeed be dyed. Today we'll be using Yamatai Demon Armour paired with a Stygian Raider Mask. Opening the die interface, each piece will have a number of different dyeable zones that are different depending on basically whichever piece you're looking at. Some armours take dye very well, in that each major segment can be dyed perfectly. However, some others don't, and thus parts of that armour might not take dyes very well, either in terms of colour tonality or actual dyeability. You may also find some armour sets that just can't be dyed in certain segments that you would think would take dye perfectly. There's no real rhyme or reason behind that, it's just how it is. Yamatai Demon and Stygian Raider both work really well with dyes, and it's one of my favourite choices for medium armour. To apply the dyes, select the element you wish to dye and click the relevant pigment on the right hand side. 
The dyeing isn't final until you click save, so you can play around with the colours and see what sort of pattern you like. I always try to apply the dyes in a similar pattern across the armour set. I do this by selecting a primary, secondary and if applicable an accent colour. In this case I actually found that the blood red dye kind of took away from the overall style so I chose to leave it out. I used black as my primary colour and white as my secondary. Black and red do also work really well together, as does inverting the black and white scheme, and of course experimenting with other colours comes up with some really cool results. And there we have it, we now have a beautiful dyed set of armour. Yamatai Demon is one of my favourite armours aesthetically, but the default colour scheme just isn't my favourite. However, the ability to dye the armour makes it much more flexible. This is, of course, only one example. There are countless others you can try with all different armour sets. There are a few weird interactions between armour and dyes, namely with the weird segmentation we mentioned earlier, and how dyes will interact with some metallic elements of certain sets. Learning those interactions and which sets work better with which dyes is just something that will come with experience. Thank you very much for watching, I remember when I found out that the ability to dye armour existed, and whilst I definitely should have known about that feature with over 500 hours in-game at the time, it has been invaluable for me to use since then, and hopefully it can help you guys out with trying to get a bit more fashion and personality into your Conan Exiles gameplay. If you enjoy my content, all the links to my Twitch, Twitter, Discord, Patreon, Host Havoc affiliate page, NordVPN discount and NordPass discount are available in the description below. However, of course, you can simply just leave a like, a comment, or subscribe, any of those are very greatly appreciated. Patrons get a bunch of nice benefits including sneak peeks of videos, your name in every video, custom made wallpapers in 1080p and 4k resolutions, full size build blueprints, discord roles, and more. That being said, a massive thanks to all of our esteemed coffee cultists on screen now for continuing to support the channel over on Patreon. Again, thanks for watching, take care and I'll see you soon.